Okay. So in chapter number 15, some natural phenomena, we will, we will be studying about the natural phenomena. For example, we know about various natural phenomena. For example, cyclones, lightning, earthquakes, okay, tsunamis, forest fires, thunderstorms, etc. Okay. And from these natural phenomena, few are very destructive. And the most destructive ones are this earthquakes and the lightning. So in this chapter, we will be discussing about these two natural phenomena, about how they occur, what are the preventive measures that we can take okay, to save the life and property <coughs> from this destructive phenomena. Okay. So first of all, let us see what is the basic definition of light and earthquake. So actually, what is light? Light is a streak of bright light. Okay, Or we can say it's a spark of light and a sound caused by electric discharge between clouds and earth or between different clouds means it can the lightning can occur between two clouds also it can occur between two clouds also or it can occur between the cloud and earth also okay so lightning occurs two types of two or this two or three types of lightning can occur it also occurs from lightning to air it doesn't reach to the earth it only just uh, at a point in the uh, in air okay so these three types of lightning occurs understood all of you okay so let us see that what is earthquake earthquake is a sudden shaking or trembling of the earth caused by disturbance deep inside the earth crust okay now what do you mean by earth crust what do you mean by earth crust Earth crust means this, the upper layer of earth, the upper layer of earth surface. Okay, the upper layer of earth surface means suppose this region, this region is known as earth crust. Okay, in which we dig the earth for boring or for foundation of buildings that that part is known as earth crust. Okay, so in deep inside the earth crust, there are several rocks, there are several rocks when this rocks moves okay naturally then the disturbance is caused and this disturbance cause a sudden shaking or trembling of uh, the earth surface in that region and that is known as what earthquake understood that is known as earthquake so these two natural phenomena are very very destructive and it causes a lot of damage to human life and property okay now just let me know that are we able to predict the cyclones and tsunamis okay so answer is yes we can predict the tsunamis and cyclones but can we predict these two natural phenomena that is lightning and earthquake that when it will occur and where it will occur no of no. course we cannot predict no. these two natural phenomena that is why it is a bit difficult to take the proper preventive measures and hence it becomes very destructive and causes a lot of damage to, our, to human life and as well as the property. Understood? So it means this kind of buildings falls down, the bridge falls down, okay, the road cracks down. So this is all the loss of property. Understood? Now, See, one thing in America, in America, there was a scientist whose name was Benjamin Franklin, whose name was Benjamin Franklin. Okay. He was the first one. He was the first one to find the cause of this lightning that why the lightning occurs 
what is the reason behind them okay so what he said that that when two objects are rubbed with each other only then or in that case only this lightning occurs okay and he gave a very simple example of rubbing of sweater or blankets with our body like now it is a winter time so you would be able to easily relate it with relate this concept with the lighting for example suppose you are in a blanket if you might have observed this if you will switch off the lights of your room and if you rub your hand on a blanket if you will if you are going to rub your hand on a blanket then you might have seen the a uh, small streak of lights or a small spark of lights and even crackling sounds occurs yes how many of you have observed this or done this me yeah priyansh has done okay sir i have done in winter season i have also done yeah actually we enjoy doing this right okay also you might have heard if suppose you are wearing a sweater okay you are wearing a woolen sweater and when you remove it from your body okay even then sometimes a crackling sound occurs okay and our we can see that our hair the hairs on our hands they they are, they they are raised okay when we remove them they are get, they are getting attracted by the that woolen sweater so here what he said that the crackling sound okay what he said the crackling sound and the spark of light the spark of light the spark of light which is seen during rubbing of during rubbing of blanket with hands okay or during taking out a sweater these are the same phenomena or the same thing happens during lightning also during lightning also even there the air currents and water droplets rubs with each other and we are able to see the the lightning okay means both the phenomena are same both the phenomena phenomena are same but the only difference is this uh, when we do in blanket it occurs on a very large scale so we like it okay we enjoy it but when lightning occurs natural lightning when occurs it occurs on a very very large scale and it becomes very dangerous understood so here you need to remember the name he was from america benjamin franklin okay and what he said he was the first one to explain the reason of this lightning and he said that this crackling and production of spark of light while rubbing with rubbing a blanket with hair is the same phenomena which is responsible for lightning okay this lightning and this is same phenomena but only difference is it is taking place on a small scale and it takes place on a large scale clear yeah okay now uh okay. one more thing before this when people were not having the knowledge of this uh the cause of or the reason of lightning then people were were having a belief that it is a wrath of god okay means we can say that when god gets when god gets angry so he gives this lightning so it was the belief during old times okay understood this mera leg now we will understand that what happens when a body gets charged what happens when a body gets charged and how a body can be charged these all things we will understand okay so here you can see uh, the first method of a for a body to get charges by rubbing by rubbing so you all have seen you all have experienced this that some objects can be charged by rubbing with each other you might have done this you might have if suppose when objects are rubbed they attract light objects like piece of paper okay and this type of charging is this type of charging is called charging by friction or charging by rubbing okay uh, for example if a plastic scale or a plastic refill or a comb which is made up of plastic okay like this we can see this blue uh, this red this red comb and this blue comb they both are 
if they are rubbed with the, with a dry hair and then if they are brought near a paper or polythene then this starts attracting the piece of paper okay why because by rubbing with the hair they get charged understood now here why they are attracting and by which force they are attracting by which force they are attracting so they are actually attracting by a force which is known as electrostatic force which is known as what electro static force okay now this force acts between it acts between charged bodies where it acts it acts between charged bodies okay now let us see that how a body gets charged how a body gets charged if two bodies are charged then the this force will act but how a body gets charged the body gets charged either by by loss of electrons or by gains of electron or let us we can also write by excess of electrons by excess of electrons or by lack of electrons understood this okay now can you tell me what is the uh, charge on an electron negative or positive what is charge on an electron negative the yeah the electrons are negatively charged the electrons are negatively charged okay so if on a body if on any body if the electrons are more it would be negatively charged and if there is a lack of electrons means an electrons are less then the then that body is said to be positively charged understood okay uh, as you all may be knowing that all the every material is made up of atoms it is made up of every material is made up of what atoms so and in this atoms there are three fundamental particles one is the center in center there is nucleus which is made up of proton and neutron and on the orbit there are electrons revolving around the nucleus it is very similar to the our solar system like we are having sun at the center here we are having nucleus at center which is made up of proton and neutron proton is positively charged whereas new electron is negatively charged okay then and whenever we rub two things now whenever we rub two things then what happens suppose this is a this is some other new uh, other atom so what would happen if we will rub these two things then electron from one will get transferred to electron of sorry this electron will get transferred to the atom of some other atom okay so what happens when these electrons get transferred so the atom which gains electron it becomes negatively charged and the atom which loses electrons it gets positively charged because the one which is losing there the lack of electrons is taking place and where the one who is gaining there there is an excess of electron understood these two things and when these two bodies get charged then electrostatic force acts between them okay now electrostatic force can be attractive and it can be repulsive it can also be repulsive we will discuss this later so hope this is clear to everyone that the force acting between charged bodies is what electrostatic force okay when a body gets negative when a body gets negatively charged when there is an excess of electron or when it gains electron okay and when it becomes positively charged when there is a lack of electrons or we can say when it loses electrons understood and initially before rubbing the two materials generally the body doesn't have any charge and it is known as neutral it is known as neutral okay before rub before rubbing the body remains neutral understood hope it's clear to everyone
Okay, like here we can see an example see. that. Uh, Here you can see this. Here you can see that after rubbing, the hair of this girl is getting attracted by this. Is getting attracted by this balloon. Okay. So can you tell me by which force this balloon is attracting the hair? Electrostatic force. Yeah, it is attracting the hair by electrostatic force. Good. Okay. Now let us see that. Uh, what is the means when the body repels means we can say that the electrostatic force is both repulsive and attractive. So when it repels and when it attracts, so it's very very easy. Uh, it is very similar to the magnet. Okay, so you can relate it with that also. For example, there are, we know that the types of charges are two, either positive or negative charge, positive or negative charge. Okay. Now, if the two charge bodies have same charge, like charges, then they will repel. And if they are having unlike charges, then they will attract. For example, the plus minus, the positive negative charge will attract. You can we can see over here they are attracting towards each, they are attracting each other. And here we can see when they are having like charges, means both positive or even if both the negative, both are negative. In, also in that case the same would happen then they will repel means the electrostatic force will act in opposite direction okay so opposite forces opposite charges attract each other whereas same charges whether plus plus and minus minus they will repel each other okay. so this is the nature of electrostatic force okay hope it is clear to everyone yes sir okay. yes sir now there is an activity to understand this, the repulsion of same charges and attraction between opposite charges. Okay. So let us understand this. Okay. So what is done over here? That two balloons are used. We have to inflate two balloons. We have to fill air in it. Then we have to hang them in such a way that they do not touch each other. Okay. I mean, somewhat like this. Uh, we can hang one, one, one here and one we can hang here like this. Okay, they are just a bit far from each other, and then so they won't touch each. They are not touching each other. Then you have to rub both the balloons with a piece of woolen cloth. So after rubbing, they would be get charge. They would get charge. Okay, so both has like because both are rubbed with the same woolen cloth, so both will acquire the negative charge. Both are get will require the same charge, whatever charges they are requiring, but they will require the same charge. So that is negative. And after rubbing when they are released, you can see that they will start applying a, a repulsive force or we can say that a repulsive force will activate in them. Okay. So we, uh, it can be seen that they are repelling each other. So this shows that when the charges are like, then both the charges are same, they start repelling each other. So one more activity, you suppose we are rubbing a plastic refill with a polythene with the polythene and then we are placing one in a glass tumbler here you can see this one is placed in a this glass tumbler okay then another plastic refill which is also rubbed with polythene it is brought near to the charge one this one this is the first one the first refill is the second refill when it is brought near it then a repulsive force acts between them okay due to which the first refill will show a change in position okay so this is this also proves that both are having same charges that is why they are repelling each other okay so understood this that when the body have same charges they repels each other okay this is an activity now what would happen if the if that balloon rubbed with woolen cloth and this um, refill rubbed with polythene is brought near to each other when they are brought near to each other, then they attract each other. They start attracting each other. Why? Because this plastic refill has acquired positive charge and this balloon has acquired negative charges. So now because they are having opposite charges, they start attracting each other. Okay. So this shows that 
if the charges are unlike means if they are opposite charges they will attract each other okay hope it's clear to everyone yes okay yes sir Next is charges acquired by different objects. Now, generally, what is see uh, what is it is it has been assumed that if a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth, okay, in this figure you can see that these glass rods are rubbed with a silk cloth. Okay, when they are rubbed with a silk cloth, they get charged, and that charge is said to be positively charged or we can see that the glass rod acquires a positive charge okay they acquires a positive charge and when a plastic rod is rubbed with fur like here you can see in this figure the plastic rod is rubbed with fur this is a fur on which this plastic rod plastic glass is rubbed so they acquires a negative charge okay and when this two when these two are brought near to each other, they start attracting each other. This again shows that they are having opposite charges. One is having positive charge and one is having negative charge. Understood? So this you need to remember. These two things. That plastic rod is considered to be negative when it is rubbed with fur and the glass rod is considered to be positive and it is rubbed with a silk cloth. Okay? Okay. There is an order that which material will get acquired which charge. So it is you can see this wool, fur, glass, paper, silk, okay, hand, rubber, amber, ebonite, plastic. So when this these materials are rubbed together, the one in the higher order gets positively charged and the one in the lower order gets negatively charged. Okay. For example, if you will rub, rub glass and fur, okay. So the glass will get negative charge and the fur will get positive charge like that. Okay. So actually you doesn't have to okay. So in this way the body gets charged. And this these two are the assumptions that we have that is made in in case of this charge bodies that whenever a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth. Okay, just remember these two names glass with silk glass with silk whenever it is rubbed then the charge acquired by glass is considered positive the charge acquired by glass is considered positive and when an ebonite rod when an ebonite rod is rubbed with a fur then the charge acquired by ebonite rod is considered negative these two you need to remember okay these are two important ones Now, if suppose, if suppose, if a suppose a refill is given to you and it is asked that tell me that whether this refill is charged or not, or if if anything is given to you, any object, and it is asked that whether tell me that whether it is charged or not. So just by looking at the that material, we cannot say, okay, हम किसी refill को देखे, we cannot say that whether it is charged or not. So to check that whether it is charged or not, a device is used. Okay, and that the name of the device is electroscope. The name is electroscope. What it does, it is a device which is used to test whether an object is having charge. That means the electric charge or not. Understood? So you you need to remember this definition. Okay. Now let us see that how this electroscope can be made and how it works. It's simple. so to make it electroscope at our home we can use an empty bottle a piece of cardboard a paper clip two small strips of aluminium foil okay here this is important we need two strips of aluminium foil then what we need to do we have to pass one end of the paper clip to the cardboard 
Okay. This you can see. This is the paper clip. This is the paper clip. This part, the red portion. This is the paper clip which is passed to the cardboard. This line, uh, this straight line is showing the cardboard. This straight line is showing the cardboard. Okay. It is showing the cardboard. Okay. This is our cardboard. And this the red one is paper clip. Now, these two you can see now. These two. Uh, show you by blue color. These two part. Okay. These two are the aluminium foils. These two are the aluminium foils. Okay. So it is given that we have to hang. We have to hang the two aluminium strips from the other end. Okay. Understood. This is the. This is how we can make a simple electroscope. What is this? A glass or a empty bottle. Okay. What is this? Cardboard. What is this? Paper clip. Paper clip. And what is this? Foil. Yeah, that's it. Only this much we require. Okay. Okay, this is a simple one that can be made at home. Even it is made up of this type also. We can use any metal foil at the top. We can use a cork in between. Then through a copper wire, we can connect. And here we can use two aluminium foils and with a copper with a copper wire we can connect this metal foil with the aluminium foil. This how this can also be done. Okay, now how it works. How it works. So what happens whenever a charged body is touched to one end of a paper clip. the aluminum strips repels each other means what if suppose you will you are touching a glass rod which is having a positive charge on it if you're touching the glass rod with this paper clip which is having a positive charge so the charges flows from one body to another body so that positive charge will start will flow through this paper clip and it will reach aluminum foil and it will reach both the aluminum foils so both these aluminum foils will get positively charged right both both will get positively charged now if our both are having positively charged then they will attract or they will repel 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 so when repel. yeah so they repels and they moves away from each other they moves away from each other so if they moves away from each other then it is it means they are this body the rod this glass rod was charged like this we check it if they are not moving away from each other, means it is not charged. Understood? Yes, sir. 